Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, I just wanted to give my opinion or a little rant on when copyright owners make a claim on YouTube videos and they either block or take down the content. Uh, I barely even just started my channel, but I'm assuming I'm going to run into this at least a few times during, you know, me making videos for this channel. So uh, the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I was watching another video by uh, another YouTuber slash musician, writer, and producer named Rick Beato. Uh, you should check out his channel. He's got a, it's a great channel. He, he teaches music theory. He uh, he pretty much uh, discusses anything having to do with music. He does top 10 lists, top 20 lists. Uh, he does uh, songs where he breaks the song down. He reviews them. He goes over the chord progressions, the, the lyrics, the guitar and piano riffs. He's got a he's got a really good channel. I'll put the link down to Rick Beato's uh, everything music page down below, and I'm gonna put the link to the 21 the full 21 minute video that he did on uh, one of the videos that got blocked because of a copyright claim. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of clips uh, from that video about Rick Beato's video being blocked, and then I'll give my uh, my short opinion on my my little rant. All right, so here's the first clip. Okay, so I wake up today and I look at my emails and I see that my video has been blocked. So I go and check on my creator app and it got blocked at 4.35 a.m. So uh, how do I know that? Because I got this notice here. Now check this out. It says, top 20 debut albums of all time. Copyrighted content, 21st century schizoid man. That's that's good old King Crimson, right? And you see it's where it says manually reviewed by copyright owner or someone on behalf of the copyright owner. And it says aviator management. And it says from Germany, okay? So I was like, this is ridiculous. I go and look and it's nine seconds of the song that I played. Nine seconds! Okay, so I said, okay, I'm going to try something different. And I look up to see if they, um, I look up to see if they actually have a phone number, which they did. So I decided, okay, I'm going to call them. They're in Germany. I call them and I said, hey, my name is Rick. Um, I have a YouTube channel. And I did a video yesterday that you guys blocked for nine seconds of use. Um, and this is not YouTube. I see people that always put this stuff in there. It's YouTube's problem. No, the artists tell the publisher or the manager how much of, the, of a song that they will play in there. It's not YouTube's deal. And I'm not going to other formats or anything. YouTube is great. The reason that you guys can see my videos is because I'm on YouTube and YouTube goes out there and you know, you know, you, you're here because of YouTube. They go out and find people that are interested in the things that I talk about. All the different groups that I talk about, all the topics I talk about, YouTube goes out there with their, with Google and they find people to bring them in here. It's not about YouTube. Okay. So, Anyways, so I call him up and this woman gets on the phone and I'm talking to her for a second. And I said, yeah, I've got a YouTube channel and I'm going to make a video about this today. And I just want to know if you have any content. She says, what? And I said, yeah, I'm making a video. I've, I've YouTube, I have a pretty big YouTube channel with over a million and a half followers. I'm going to get on and do this. I want to see if you guys have a comment on this. Hang on a minute. And she puts some guy on the phone. Hello? And I said, yeah, I'm YouTuber. You guys blocked my video. It says, you guys are aviation management, right? Well, you blocked my video because I used nine seconds of a King Crimson song. Nine seconds where I was telling people about a song that came out 52 years ago about how it's one of the greatest debut records of all time. And he says, uh, I said, do you have a comment? Because I'm making a video about this in a few hours. And he says, uh, no, I, I don't have a comment. Okay, so before I, 
before I made this video and after I saw Rick's video, I I didn't know what the options were really for copyright owners when they had uh, their content in a video in somebody else's video and, and somebody else was trying to make money off of their video. I thought that the only option was to really block or take down the video. But uh, there's actually four options. Four options for a copyright owner when they claim their content on a YouTuber's video. One, block or take down the video. Two, mute the audio portion of the video. Three, monetize the video with ads and collect the revenue. Four, track the video. Now, I really have no clue what track the video is. But if you have option number three and you're able to monetize the video with ads and collect the revenue, why would you even have to think about options one or two, blocking and take down, take down the video or mute the audio portion of the video? I, I don't understand that. I mean, why would these copyright owners block the content? I mean, they're getting free publicity from YouTubers that are talking positively about their song and they don't even have to lift a finger. They would be getting more revenue from it too. I, mean, I know a lot of these artists don't need free publicity because they have a, a huge record label behind them and they give them a ton of promotion and they're already millionaires, but why would you object to doing something like that? I mean, unless a YouTube is being really negative about the song, why would you object to them talking about your song? I mean, most, most YouTubers that are doing this are praising those songs and those artists. So I, I just, I don't see the logic in that. All right. So here's a second video clip from Rick's video. Okay. So, they manage, aviation manages a bunch of different artists, many artists, a lot of older artists like that. And they don't get this at all. They do not get how YouTube works. Okay, so complete aside here, um, I'm supposed to testify on a Senate committee, subcommittee hearing on the 28th about fair use, okay? Now, <laughs> When I got asked to do this, I said, this is nonpartisan, right? The guy that called me and asked me, I said, yeah. And I said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do it. So I was telling my sister about this and she, she says, you know, I saw Don Henley testified on something with that. I'll send you the link to it. It's the same committee, okay? He testified a few weeks ago because I had seen an article about this, about his testimony whining about how they don't make any money how YouTube uh, infringes on their copyrights all the time and he can't make any money, okay? So she sends me this thing and I'm gonna play you the Don Henley bit bit. Now you're gonna feel, uh, you're gonna uh, cry for Don here, okay? Uh, now I probably shouldn't play this or talk about it since I'm testifying on it, but I don't care. If they don't want me to testify, that's fine. It doesn't make, make a difference. I'd rather be on here talking about it because way more people will see this. Now here's Don Henley whining about about him, about this. There are currently about six billion posts. Hold on, let me get it so you can see him. About his six billion now posts. Those, let me just give you a perspective of the magnitude of the problem. There are currently about six billion posts on YouTube. And out of those- Can you hear this? six billion posts, four billion of them are unclaimed. And out of those six billion posts, 84% of them contain music. Now let's say it takes two minutes to file a claim. So at two minutes per claim, it would take 200 million hours to claim them and take them all down. At minimum wage, He's gonna try it would cost to. $2 billion. Of course, by then there would probably be another billion posts on YouTube. So as has already been said, as you said, this is an endless game of whack-a-mole and the notice and takedown system is badly broken. Universal Music Group administrates the publishing for the Eagles and here, myself. And here we go. a team of 60 people. 60 people work 60 for people him. people who sit in a room with computers and all they do all day long, five days a week, sometimes six days a week, is deal with the platforms such as YouTube and Facebook. They file claims and they issue takedown notices for the Eagles and for myself. 
60 people. Those amount to between 200 and 500 claims a week. Okay, so he has, six, he has 60 people that go out there five and six days a week to file claims against YouTubers. And he goes on to talk about how he's doing this for the smaller uh, artists out there. Well, they're not making any money. He goes on to talk about how little you make from streaming and everything like that. It's like, okay, you make only this much from a YouTube video. So why are you whining about it? For a million views on YouTube, you make 1,250 bucks. Okay, that's it. 1,250 bucks. What about us? What about the YouTubers? What do we make? Now I've, I'm fine. I don't mind. I don't whine about demonet demonetized videos, right? People support my channel by buying stuff in my store, or being part of the Beato Club. But either buying my book, which is on sale, RB 100, 50% off my Beato book bundle. It's 600 and something pages. What 670, Billy? 670 pages or my ear training course, it's on sale, 30% off today, same discount code. Now, what about us? What about us? What about the YouTubers that spend hours? You know how long it takes me to make a video like this? Not like this, but a video? It takes a long time. Do I sit there and whine about this stuff? Do you guys say, oh my, do you hear me come out? All oh, my videos get demonetized, no. I talk about blocking, about takedowns, about censorship. It's outrageous. He's on there. What if you see his face? He he's just enraged over this. He's enraged. I mean, you get just look at his face. My God, it's ridiculous. I'm not here whining about stuff. I just don't like. I made a video for free, okay, for free. All my What Makes This Song Great videos I make for free for people to enjoy. I work on them 12 hours a day, typically it takes to make a video. And I don't get compensated from YouTube. All right? Now, it's very easy to, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to testify in this committee, but it's pointless because this video will do more me talking to you here on my channel will do more than this video that nobody's going to watch on C-SPAN. And none of these senators, this is really a bipartisan, a nonpartisan thing because they're going to side with the big tech people anyways, right? Or they're going to sign with the, with the record labels, whatever, you know, and he's complaining about YouTube. It's like, come on. And then he goes on with what happens with the copyright takedown notice about how, how it is. He's talking about 250 of these a week. Oh my God, this goes on and on. It's ridiculous. What about the YouTubers though? What do they do? They just do this for free? Well, yes, they do. Most YouTubers I know, all their biggest content are manually looked over, picked over, and they immediately demonetize the stuff when the videos come out when you first get your, uh, when you actually make the most money, if you had a video that got demonetized, that didn't get demonetized. All right, Don Henley, he's a great songwriter. He was a great singer. He's had a great, something like 50 plus year career with the Eagles and as a solo career. And the guy's worked over $200 million. I mean, Don Henley wife's for $1,200. $1,200 to him is like a dollar to me and you. I mean, to Don Henley and the other copyright owners, is this just their ego? Or is this just like an old way of thinking? I'm a copyright owner. I'm not that young. I'm, I'm 41 years old right now. I mean, I'm obviously not as big as Don Henley. I, I definitely don't have a couple hundred million dollars to spend. But I mean, I understand the value of intellectual property. And of course, I would want to get paid for my intellectual property or whatever I create. If somebody else is trying to make the money off of my intellectual property and I'm not getting a part of it. But like I said, option number three, when there's a copyright claim from a copyright owner is to monetize the video with ads and collect the revenue. Why would, why would somebody like Don Henley block the video? 
I don't understand it. It would make everybody happy. It would make the copyright owner happy because they would they would be able to monetize the video and collect the revenue. And it would make the YouTubers happy because they're building a channel. They're, they're doing what they love. They're praising these artists and these songs that they loved their whole lives. And then you heard Rick. I mean, he, most of his videos are demonetized, especially the ones where he's using these popular songs. I mean, he's using, he's, he's teaching people about these songs. He's trying to teach music theory. Uh, like I said, about lyrics, about guitar and piano riffs. And he praises these people. He, it's not like he's talking negative about these people. He actually loves th this music and these songs and these artists. And, and the video that he got taken down was, the, the song was 52 years old. I, I mean, come on, these guys that were, the copyright owner that was making the claim on this video was like, it's got to be like 80 years old. I mean, come on. And Henley, I mean, don't you think what he's doing is counterproductive? He's complaining about not making any money off the copyright from his songs on YouTube. But then he's hiring 60 people to go on YouTube to search for all of his songs and make copyright claims and take down and block orders. I mean, he's got to be paying these people. So if he's complaining about losing money, then why, why is he hiring 60 people? Like I said, he's worth over $200 million. He's able to hire 60 people to work for him. Why doesn't someone like that just monetize the videos and collect the revenue? I mean, I, I know it, I'm sounding like a broken record now, but it's just, it makes no sense to me. I mean, and, and like Rick said, it, YouTubers aren't getting paid off for the demonetized videos. They, they're doing it because they love to do it. They want to do it. And, and it's not, that's fine. That's fair. But the thing is, why would you block it? I mean, YouTube has put a lot of time into these videos. For them to have their video blocked, it's like a, a knife in the heart. It, you you record the video, uh, even a five to ten minute video, it could take hours because you know you, you do different takes and you have to do the video editing. And then after you do the video video editing, you have to export the video. All of this stuff. Uh, a video can take anywhere from like three hours to 10 hours. All right. So like I said, check out Rick Beato's uh, YouTube page. It's a great page. He's got a lot of content. He's got over 700 something videos, which <laughs> I think more than half of them were, uh, they have copyright claims on them. And I think he said a third of them were demonetized and about 43, I think he said were blocked. But check out his uh, check out his page. And like I said, I'm going to link the video, the 21 minute video that he did on this subject down below. And just tell me what you think about this topic. If you're in favor of, you know, Don Henley and copyright holders or if you have mixed emotions or if you're in favor of the YouTubers, let me know down below and I'll see you later.